This video has been sponsored by Whatnot. More on them at the end of the video. So this is one of my favorite series that I do here on the channel, and I haven't done it in years. In fact, two generations ago is when I last visited the My Pokemon Gym series. And if you don't know what that is, if you're confused about that, you must be new here. Hi, welcome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, and it starts pretty simply. What if you were a Pokemon Gym leader? What if you lived in the world of Pokemon and were recognized for your incredible battling talents? What if you were chosen to design your own gym, your own puzzle to take over a pre-existing gym or create a new one? You don't have to put a flying gym in Fortress City, you can put a rock or a fire gym there, as long as you can justify it creatively in the comments down below. What kind of trainers would work in your gym? Who would you hire? What would your team be like? And of course, what would your badge be like? What TM would you give out at the end? And most crucially to this generation, what would your Terrastal Pokemon be? See, now you can use any Pokemon in your gym team as long as you can creatively justify it. That's the point of this exercise. It's a creative exercise. Uh, I love doing these, uh, and this is going to be my rock gym. Now, when it comes to pre-existing rock type Pokemon gyms, you've obviously got Brock, but then you've also got Roxanne and Rourke, which all first gym leaders, this won't be a first gym. This will be like a fifth Pokemon gym or a fourth one. I guess technically the gym can be battled in any order, but I'll be setting my levels pretty high and maybe I'd have like a weaker team, but I'm only going to go through the one for you today, intending that it's a fourth or fifth level gym. Anyway, you've got the previously mentioned gym leaders as well as Grant, you've got the trial captain at Olivia, and then finally you've got Gordy. I think it's Gordy, not Geordie. Yeah, Gordy from the latest generation. And apart from Gordy, Geordie, the rest of them all have a pretty consistent theme across rock type gym leaders. You might not have noticed this. I only noticed this when I was doing notes for this video and trying to come up with some inspiration. So many of them have a connection to fossils and ancient Pokemon. Brock, when you go to rebattle him in Generation 2, has both Armistar and Kabutops. Roxanne has a gym that in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is literally an excavation site. And I think there's a excavation shite. I definitely said excavation shite. Can I say that on this channel? Will I get demonetized? Uh, anyway, excavation site. Anyway, in the background of that excavation site, I believe there's the fossil of a Dragonite, which is the same as the one from Generation 5. It's a lot of Dragonite fossils that appear in the Pokemon world. I wonder what happened to all those Dragonite. Anyway, uh, alongside that, obviously, you've got Rourke, who uses fossil Pokemon, so does Grant. Olivia collects rare gemstones, and I believe her family and Sun and Moon also sell fossils in their shop. And like I said, the only one that doesn't fit in is the Galar gym leader. So, will I be making my gym a fossil gym? No, I'll be trying to be absolutely original and uh, kind of put a different spin on that. Because ancient Pokemon and the ancient Pokemon past are obviously still a big part of the rock type. It makes sense. Rocks and gemstones appear all across Pokemon's history, whether that's the red orb, the blue orb, the greasiest orb, all of the different orbs that appear. Mega stones and evolution stones. There is so much connection rock to the history of the Pokemon world. And so as you, as a trainer, traveling around the Kanto region, and again, I'm a, I'm a later gym, you will have been traveling through Mount Moon, where you will have learned all about this. You will have met excavators and fossil scientists all talking about Pokemon fossils and talking about Clefairy and battling against maybe even the old Screamtail that's made its way out there. And they're going to be talking to you about how the origins of Pokemon life may in fact be from space. This was actually hinted in in the original Generation 1. I mean, there's literally references to, to it in the anime, but also in the Pewter Museum. There's two different subject matters in the museum, which is fossils and ancient Pokemon life and space, as if the two might be related somehow. So that's the direction I'm going to be going in for my gym. Speaking of my gym, I've taken over the Pewter City gym. Brock is out. He's off with Nurse Joy now, finally living out his dreams in the Pokemon Center. So I've taken over the gym, but I've closed the gym doors. You can't get in. The only way to actually get into the gym is via the museum, of which you're going to have to go in. And don't worry, there's no fee. The exhibition is completely free. You can see whatever you want. Except when you go in, the scientists in there are going to be like, hey, you don't work here, or the price of entry is actually a battle with us. And because of the way the exhibits are laid out, and you're going to see some interesting stuff in there, Aerodactyl fossils, references to Missing No, references to the Tree of Evolution, which, by the way, you can get yours right now using the link in the description. It's a really cool poster. I love it. I can't wait to have mine physically finally, but it's on its way. Link below. Anyway, point is... After trying to upsell you and send you to the gift shop, these scientists are going to battle you using a whole host of fossil Pokemon. The fossil Pokemon from across all of the generations. Yes, even the Galar mutant ones, because, heck, it's a gym and it's more based on a theme than a type. But, of course, most of the fossil Pokemon are rock type. And you'll probably see a Relicanth spring up as well, because it's basically like an honorary fossil Pokemon from Gen 3. 
However, you're a powerful Pokemon trainer and you've dealt with gyms before. So you're going around looking at all the exhibits and one of them is just like a hole in a floor representing an excavation site. And you're like, hey, the, I, I, like for some reason there isn't a rope blocking you off from going to that exhibit. That's when you realize that is how you're gonna get into the pewter gym. There is an underground tunnel, much like the Sinnoh Underground, and it's gonna be like a little maze down there with more trainers using more of the evolved fossil Pokemon. And this is the gym puzzle to make your way around this maze and find your way back up into the gym. And there, you've done it. You've made your way in, and you can see that the whole gym is being reconstructed from the inside. It was far too simple when Brock ran the gym. Now I'm going to turn it into an observatory, because it turns out to understand the truth about the history of the Pokemon world, looking down to the floor, to the rocks, to the ground, that, yeah, that's one thing. But looking up into space, that's where you might really begin to find some answers. And of course, standing on the pedestal, directing all of the various construction workers with their conkelders, who I don't know if they're battleable or not. There you will see instructing them about in the new construction of the gym, me, gym leader Toby, the rock Pokemon master. Oh, by the way, I nearly totally forgot. That maze that I mentioned, the underground maze, in order to navigate it properly, you can just do what most players will do, which is just randomly bump around every wall battling trainers until you eventually find the right exit, or you can use the item finder slash dowsing machine to ping items that are around, and there will be some items buried, and it's always Stardust. You need to follow the trail of Stardust. This will be hinted to you, of course, by one of the various gym trainers up in the museum, so if you've remembered it, use your item finder, it's gonna help you get through the maze. Anyway, you've entered the gym room, and here I am. Now, of course, gym leader Toby is standing there, and he's pretty impressed with his new position as a gym leader, so he's going to say something that he thinks is profound sounding. It sounds better in his head, but actually it's really corny, but that's why it's a Pokemon game. And he's like, hey, the shape of the earth, it reminds me of Pokeballs. Yeah, that really did sound better in my head. Um, yeah, he holds his Pokeball, he talks about celestial bodies and the stars. He, he talks about how there may be Pokemon life out there, out beyond. And that in fact, it might be that Pokemon life that crashed down to Earth millions of years ago that caused the evolution of all Pokemon life as we know it. There are a lot of questions and not a lot of answers, but I'll find those answers through Pokemon battle. And I begin by sending out my first Pokemon. Go! Macargo. So Macargo is out, and why would I choose Macargo? Because Macargo is effectively, and I talked about this in my uh, <coughs> Tree of Evolution series of which the poster is available using the link in the top of the description. Um, I've talked about it before, but Macargo is effectively a planet with a molten core and a rock hard shell around the outside, the crust, and it just happens to be the case that that molten core then bubbles up and creates the Pokemon that spews out, and that's Macargo. It's kind of like the core of our planet. Anyway, Macargo is totally ready to go with Earth Power, Ancient Power, Light Screen to help protect against some moves coming in, and of course, Flamethrower to deal with any grass type that Pokemon that you bought, thinking that would help you against a rock type gym. Of course, if you bought a water type Pokemon, Macargo is probably going down, and let's face it, you probably did. So, Macargo's down. Next up onto the field, we have Pokemon number two. Minior. And Minior is a Pokemon that of course knows Explosion because I just love that idea. And again, it fits with the theme of Celestial Bodies. Its other moves are Ancient Power because of course we're talking about the ancient power of the Pokemon world. And you'll notice Vicargo had Earth Power. This one's going to have Cosmic Power. So we've got all those powers tied together. And then finally it's Ace Move Rollout because it's a Pokemon literally perfectly designed for rollouts. But you defeat it. So next up I'm going to have to send out a basically bigger Minior in the form of Lunatone. Psychic, Cosmic Power, Moonblast, and Hypnosis. I like Moonblast here because it is the Pokemon that looks like the moon, but of course, you're able to defeat it. I haven't brought anything to the table that was actually strong against water Pokemon. Probably Lunatone is my best shot so far. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, Lunatone. Hey, not every gym can cover every single type. At least Lunatone's going to deal with any of the fighting Pokemon that you brought to the table, so I'm pretty happy about that. And then, next up out, we have, of course, Solrock. This one, again, dealing with any grass Pokemon that you bought, it knows Flare Bits, but again, to help it with those fighting types, Zen Headbutt. And in addition to that, it knows Rock Slide and once again, Explosion. But if both the sun and the moon have fallen, my other rock type Pokemon are gone, then you are going to have left me no choice. I'm going to be down to my fifth and final Pokemon, which by the way, rules for these, you're only allowed to bring five Pokemon to equal my five. My fifth Pokemon is not natively a rock type, but through the power of terrestrialization, it will be. But first, my gym trainer steps forward and says, I hope you haven't forgotten to subscribe. 
Also, stick around to the end for the sponsored segment because I think you'd legitimately get some use out of it. Anyway, meet my terrestrial Pokemon, and he flicks his Pokeball in the air. And I say, before I became the gym leader, Brock gave me some advice to look to the other gym leaders of Kanto for inspiration. Particularly, he said to watch the Cerulean gym leader closely. I've learned her ways, and I bring out Starmie. And out of the Pokeball wishes a Starmie, my ace Pokemon. And again, this is obviously just a nice throwback to Kanto in general. But also, if Starmie had a third type, it would be Rock. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah, so I was about to say it would be Psychic. It already has Psychic. It would be Rock then after that. Because it is a gem cord Pokemon that is a starfish that is said to be from space. And so it is going, of course, to Terrastalize and transform into Terrastal Rock type Starmie. Putting all the focus on that gem-like core, I'm going to give it the move Recover, which will help keep its health up and keep this battle going, because ultimately Recover requires it, the way that it uses Recover in the anime is like super cool with its gem glowing. On top of that, it's going to know Psychic and Surf for the stab damage on those fronts. And then finally, it's going to have the move Meteor Beam, which I think is like an impressive ace move for this Pokemon to have. And again, ties into the themes of the gym really, really well. And it's going to be holding that Psychic Gem for that extra little bit of devastation. But you are a talented Pokemon trainer, so ultimately you defeat the Starmie. It's not the most challenging gym in the world, but it's got a nice theme about it. And that's what I wanted to do for the creative part of this. So all that is left is for you to get the gym badge and the TM that I'm going to be giving you. The TM, starting with that, is going to be the TM for Meteor Beam, which is not something that exists currently, but this is my series and I can do whatever I want. You should be getting creative in the comments down below with yours. And then I hand over to you the Comet badge. A rock badge for obviously it looks like a comet. The last shaman did this for me and actually did all the gym badges that you're going to be seeing in this series. Although I only ever have like two at a time because I'm not like doing the whole series as a bulk recording. I want to do them bit by bit as the year goes out. And as rock type gym leader Toby stands there defeated, he says, Well done, trainer. I give you the comet badge. The first of your 19 badges that are going to be in this series for you. You're going to go a long, long way. You may even make it to the Toby Run Pokemon League. But kid, you still got a long way to go. You're going to need friends besides you, good Pokemon, and of course finances to help you, which is why I think you'll get real value out of today's gym sponsor, Whatnot. I genuinely think you're going to get tremendous value out of this. I spoke about them a little bit last year, and I'm going to be speaking about them more this year, but Whatnot is a live buying and selling platform for Pokemon cards, collectibles of all kinds, to be honest, where if you're a huge Pokemon collector like me, but maybe you've got some cards in excess that you're not wanting to keep hold of, like, all of them. You want to make a little bit of extra cash so you can buy more different collectibles, maybe off of whatnot, because of course there are so many fantastic deals going on over there. You download the app using the link in the description and sign up today. It's now also in the UK. And then you can join a huge community of Pokemon card collectors and other collectible collectors and traders. And in fact, that's my favorite part about the platform is when you're selling cards elsewhere online, not only is it a really long process listing everything up, doing the title, the description, is it mint? Is it near mint? Am I going to get in trouble if I don't get that exactly right? But you you can just show the card while you're live, while the auction is happening. Uh, you can set the card prices as low as you want. So I set pretty much all of my prices as low as one pound. In fact, doing that last month allowed us to raise over 1,000 pounds for cancer research, which I'll talk about more in another video. Just from people buying my Pokemon cards, so thank you for that. But you can show the card in real time. If there are any dents or nicks or anything wrong with it, people can see and they don't have to bid any more than they don't want to. On the 31st of January at 6 p.m. GMT, I'm actually going to be doing a live stream opening up the, the new set crown zenith and just going through and like selling a whole bunch of those cracking packs for you selling you the packs beforehand and then doing the break so you'll see what you get so click the link at the top of the description head on over to my profile favorite the show so that you know that you're ready for it and you're not going to miss it and of course download the app and sign up today and don't miss out and thank you to whatnot for sponsoring this video and my pokemon gym series thank you for taking on my gym challenge and of course so hi pokemon masters this is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. Thank you so much to those of you supporting me on Patreon, allowing me to put out as many videos as I have lately, including the big patrons of this month, Anthony Lee, El Gator, Charmander Aznable, and Jed Rubin. Thank you.